at Al Maghrib Institute, a research scholar for Yaqeen Institute, and a resident scholar and adjunct lecturer in Michigan. He went through intensive studies under numerous scholars, earning dozens of traditional religious certifications, and earned a master's degree from the University of Jordan's College of Sharia and a master's degree from Harvard University. He studied religions, philosophy, political science, and psychology. Over the last decade, he has served as an imam and community leader in Michigan. Please welcome Imam Suleiman to the stage.
before finally a later successor uh, ended the Inquisition. What's the point here? Imam Ahmad, in all the court trials, I want you to imagine watching the news and you're seeing this happen before your eyes. In all of the court trials, using the Qur'an as a proof and refusing to give it, they beat him, they tortured him. And it was some of the most severe form of torture that the people had reported and the guards themselves had reported. But he refused. He sensed that passing this trial, this test, was crucial, was important. And he did pass the test. Because he succeeded the Khalifa, the first and the second and the third as well. He succeeded and he held on to his beliefs. And what ended up happening is a ripple effect of inspiration spreading throughout the Muslim world. That Imam Ahmad Rahmanullah held on to his beliefs despite the fact that he was tortured. And had he gave in and taught the wrong idea of Islam, perhaps today we would be saying very different things with Allah Ta'ala. Now what is the point of the story? It sets the foundation for our discussion on resilience. Being strong in the face of adversity. You might be going through a hardship, a struggle, a trial in your practice of Islam. And it could be something that your family members are not going through. You could be going through a trial that your parents did not go through, especially if you were raised here and your parents were raised in a Muslim majority country. You could be going through a trial for saying that in Allah while being in the corporate world, for example. What is your trial and how do you respond? Be resilient, be strong, take inspiration from the many great legends before and the legends of our times as well. Some people have expressed before their feeling, their thought, that changing one child doesn't make a big difference, doesn't make a significant impact on the world. But that's not true. I want you to imagine going back in time 200 years, let's say the 1800s, a righteous couple raising a righteous child, and a child having righteous children, let's say five children, working on raising them righteously in a difficult time and place. And they as well get married, move on, have children. Now, 200 years later, maybe there'll be 100, 200, 300 descendants, hopefully professing la ilaha illallah, as that first parent did, and as their mother or their father did. And the reality is that the reward for raising one child or many children, an entire community, an entire nation, an entire ummah, your own local community, righteously, wisely, with the full understanding of tabbing and all the different areas of development, is that you are giving them strength, you are giving them confidence, and an unimaginable change in the generations thereafter, a multi-generational effect. Remember this, your steadfastness today is the success of many generations tomorrow. Your strength today is the victory of many oppressed believers tomorrow. Your courage today is the facilitation of justice for others tomorrow. It's important for us to recognize, at least here in the United States of America, you're not being persecuted in a specific form to give up your Islam. You're not directly being punished for wearing hijab and saying la ilaha illallah at the political government's level. So the question that I ask is, what then is your struggle? We recently interviewed a sister from East Turkestan, from the Uyghur community. And if you're not aware by now, there are millions of Uyghur Muslims being persecuted in concentration camps, killed and kidnapped, and others uh, actually tested on, experimented on. Others, their organs are harvested and taken. They're being punished for being Muslim. They're being punished for their religion and their ethnicity. We spoke to this sister and interviewed her for a coalition that we started in Michigan. You know what she said? She said, I wish I could just see my family again. I wish I could get on a call, a WhatsApp call, a voice call, a video call, anything, just to talk to my family. And then she said, and this was a sister who fled, she's in Canada now, may Allah reward her, bless her, protect her family. She said, I noticed shockingly so many Muslims in the West and especially the youth who don't seem to realize the blessing that they have in being able to say la ilaha illallah freely, in being able to wear hijab freely. She said, I don't fully understand because those were in concentration camps and she shared two dozen stories with us. They try to wear hijab briefly, they try to pray with nobody noticing. Forget beards and appearances and going to the masjid, your monitor everywhere you go. 
she said they wouldn't cry when they were tortured. They would cry when their families were taken. And they would wish to be in the shoes of a Muslim in the West so that they can simply say, La ilaha illallah, without talking. What is your test? You are not in the shoes of Imam Ahmed a thousand years ago. And you're not going through what our brothers and sisters in East Turkestan are going through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expedite their relief and their justice and use all of us for their cause. Say Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the affairs of our brothers and sisters in Palestine, Kashmir, and India, Pakistan, all around the world, in every single country in which Muslims are being oppressed for saying La ilaha illallah, and in which there's any oppression of any form. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their affairs. Say Ameen. What is your sacrifice? What is your struggle? Is it getting out of bed every morning? Are you sacrificing looking cool in front of your friends? Are you sacrificing the pressures of wearing hijab in America in which yes, there is pressure? But is that your sacrifice? Is that what comes to mind when you think, I am sacrificing a lot and I am being resilient, I am being strong, I am being courageous as a Muslim today. Do you fear that you're going to lose something of this world? Do you feel that you're going to lose something of temptations and desires? Something of your relationships or friends? Validation in society from others? What matters most to you when you sacrifice and you hold for What happens at the end of your life? When you die, and we all will die, may Allah grant us a righteous end and say Ameen. When you die and your soul is leaving your body, are you going to be thinking back to all the people that caused you to choose their pleasure and their validation over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure? Do you think that's going to come to mind as a moment of happiness? Or is it going to come to mind as potentially a moment of regret? What happens when we leave this world? One of my favorite verses of the Quran and I shared this in one other lecture during the convention. I want to call it the verse of steadfastness. The verse of glad tidings. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily those who say, my Lord is Allah, and then they remain firm. They remain strong, they remain resilient. What happens? The angels come to them. Their souls are leaving their bodies. They're afraid. Where am I headed? Did I do well? Was I strong enough? You know? And the angels come to you, greeting you, smiling at you. Saying what? Allah taqafu wa la ta'zanu. Have no fear. You will not be sad. Wa abishiru bil jannati lati kuntum But instead, have the glad tidings of the jannah, the paradise that you were promised before. You knew holding on to your faith and being a strong Muslim in the 21st century was going to require sacrifices was going to require courage and bravery when other people are silent and afraid. And the end result is that you are welcomed into a better world in which there is no longer any fear. And that kind of reward is the reward that removes the fear of everything for the rest of your act of life. Which fear would we rather avoid? Think of your legacy if you were to pass away today. May Allah grant us long, healthy, righteous lives. Think of your legacy and not what people care about. A true legacy in Islam is one in which you free yourself from the expectations of people and you submit to the expectations of the Creator. You submit to the expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because society is calling people to chase their desires in a very deceptive way. Society is calling people to pursue materialism. Buy this product, you'll be happy. And keep buying all of these products, you'll still be happy. Pursue and follow these intoxicants and these drugs and look at the opioid crisis. May Allah protect us all in our communities. Look at the effect that all of this has, this hedonistic lifestyle on mental health all across the world. It produces very depressing results. May Allah protect us all. 
How do we respond? We respond by sharing the blessing of connectedness and tranquility with a true cause, with a true legacy. When society tells you that politically you must say this or do that, and you know that it's wrong, you hold on to your principles with wisdom, with strategy, with courage, while strategically trying to show people what is best, what is correct. It doesn't matter if everyone else is doing the wrong thing. It doesn't matter if your entire family is doing the wrong thing. It doesn't matter if your entire school, your university, your workplace, or an entire country are doing the wrong thing. Because human beings generally will rush away from danger and harm. And the believers, because we know the reality of life, are rushing away from the fire, away from regrets, so that we don't say, Ya laytan, qaddam to the hayat. I wish I did more for my life. I wish I said more good deeds ahead. Where are the believers rushing to? Wasadi'u, wasadi'u, wasadi'u. Race with one another, win with one another to paradise, to Allah's forgiveness. What matters more at the end of the day? The believers who rushed to the ark of Nuh alayhi salam, the ark of Noah, while his own son, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, his own son with arrogance, joined the disbelievers and tried to flee to a mountain, thinking he was going to be saved from the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You rush towards Allah, and Allah will grant you a tranquility and a resolve that will affect many generations. And then you enter Jannah by the will of Allah. May Allah grant us all and all of the organizers of this convention and all of our family members and all of the people that we can reach out to. May Allah grant us all the highest levels of Jannah. Say Ameen. Imagine those first steps you take after all the difficulties you went through as a Muslim American in the 21st century or Muslim anywhere around the world. You held on to your faith as difficult as it was and you entered Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you thought, no more struggles, no more pain. I don't need to worry about pressure anymore. I don't need to go through hardships anymore. No more injustices, no more controlling of the nafs, no more societal ills. All you will know moving forward is happiness. Bliss upon bliss. The meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The meeting with the righteous. The meetings that we will have. May Allah grant us gatherings of Jannah, say Ameen. Imagine you're walking around exploring all that you're exploring, prepared for you in Jannah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. to my ibadi as salihin He says, I have prepared for my righteous servants what no eye has ever seen, what no ear has ever heard, and what has not been imagined by any human being. Why? Because of what you did. Imagine hearing the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of this reward. <laughs> Truth. 
and the truth will distinguish you from people of falsehood. The truth will separate you from lifestyles that are immoral. And we don't look down on others, but rather, if you feel grateful for access to that truth, then share it with others. If you feel grateful, then hold on to your faith. Are we not upon the truth? Umar radiallahu anhu said, put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of the ditch, as they were being killed, and their, their story is mentioned in Surah al Buruj, as they were being killed and thrown into, in, into the pit of fire, a woman stopped and hesitated. And then her child spoke, and this is one of the few times an infant spoke and this miracle took place. Oh mother, be patient, for you are upon the truth. Brothers and sisters, old and young, be patient. You are upon the truth. Be patient. You are upon the truth. Be patient. You are upon the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm throughout our lives and a source of light for others in our lives and allow us constantly to be seeking His pleasure and all the pleasure of human beings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result allow us to see a multi-generational impact on the world and a reward in Jannah forever. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة